to Kitty Talks Dogs. Serena, the whole Transgroom team and me wish you a Merry Christmas and a very Happy New Year. If you would like to see how to commercially groom a Yorkshire Terrier, keep on watching. This is your beginning. I'm going to show you how to wash, how to maintain a coat, but most of all, how to clip and how to scissor the Yorkshire Terrier a commercial way. Today we have with us a multi-champion Yorkshire Terrier, purebred, um, and her name is Serena. She's born in 2015 and she's bred by Nadine Carpaccio. And now I will take my record. Uh, her real name is Holderwood La Dolce Vita. Serena lives with nine Yorkies in the house and the owners have no cages, so they all live among each other and Serena loves to go walking, but most of all Serena loves squeaky toys. So this is one of her main things, she loves playing with squeaky toys. Below the video, if you push more information, you can see a list of all the products I've been using, but most of all, if you are interested in a certain section of washing, drying, clipping or scissoring, you can also click only on this section and see the section that you are interested in. Yorkshire Terrier is actually originally from Yorkshire in England and has become a Yorkshire Terrier by breeding with different small terriers. Yorkshire Terriers have a fantastic temperament and if you have a Yorkie bred with a pedigree, a pure bred pedigree, um, you will have a Yorkie like you see today and they will have a very nice coat and a very nice temperament. The Yorkshires you buy in a shop are sometimes from a very different origin and don't have the same DNA in their genes and it's very difficult if you buy a Yorkie in a shop, which I wouldn't advise. Another thing which I also want to add, a Yorkshire Terrier looks very cute, has a very fantastic temperament but it stays a Terrier and a Terrier can be very stubborn and very bossy. So with a Yorkie Terrier, as cute as they are, you always have to be very, very careful. You have to stay the boss. A Yorkie's coat should be really kept very long, naturally, and should be washed every week. And if you want to keep your Yorkie's coat very long, the products you use are extremely important. It's extremely, to, extremely important to have every single hair very protected and to use very good quality products, shampoo for long hair, dog breed, and very nourishing conditioners to maintain the coat. Not only the products, but also the brushes are very important. This looks like a normal pin brush, but it's not. This is our 6060 Yento pin brush, and this is very, very, very flexible. Even with my little pinky, when I touch the pins, they are flexible. It means that this brush is not going to like break the coat if you comb the coat or brush the coat and it's stuck somewhere, the pins are gonna be very flex flexible and not break the coat. You use, um, you need to use this kind of pin brush if you want to protect every single hair and grow coat very long. from Serena you see it's a very beautiful confirmation she is very used to the grooming table even I've put her on a grooming table a turntable and she doesn't seem to mind and here you see the coat and the other side A Yorkie has hair in the ears, so to be able to grip the hair very nicely, I used to 
I like to use the finger condoms and the ear powder. Here you see the inside of the ear and I like to use the finger condoms very much. It gives me more grip and it's also very clean. So you can just take them off and throw them away afterwards. And here you see me putting the powder on top of the ear and like dapping and then pulling out all the hairs. I personally like to also take a bit from the outside out. So all the hair which is like in between and outside of the ear, I also take away because then the ear is nice and airy. And as you can see, Serena is like letting me do that very easily. You can see that she's very, very used to being groomed. When all the hair is gone, I prepare the big Q-tips with the ear care solution. And the ear care solution will dissolve all the dirt and the wax. And normally I let like uh, 30 seconds, the product like uh, after I've put it in, I totally fill up the ear with the product. So it's full of product. And then I will let it sit for 30 minutes with a gentle massage and that gives the active ingredients in the product the chance to get all the wax and the dirt dissolved and then with the big q-tips we can just take out the dissolved wax very very easily if necessary you can repeat that and in small ears I don't really want to like go into the ears with a dry cotton uh, q-tip I like to wet it in the solution so it won't uh, like be dry on the on the very sensitive skin so as you can see I wet it a bit more and then it's like uh, very humid and you can take all the dirt very easily out of the ear When cleaning out the inside of a dog's ear, you don't really have to be afraid of going too deep. You, of course, you have to be very gentle and not like push it down very much. But actually the ear itself is going like up a bit, as you can see here on the drawing. So actually you cannot really penetrate or go deep too much. Uh, yes, be careful, but don't be afraid of going too deep. And here you see the Q-tip, how it is afterwards. As you can see, we have some wax there. And now the ears are squeaky and they smell immaculate. And here I'm very excited about showing you our new little bottle. I love little bottles like this because this is really, really handy. You can just uh, put your ear solution now in this bottle and push down with a paper towel or whatever and the liquid every time you push down you can wet your liquid and you can use it for anything and I use it here for the outside of the ear and it's just wonderful because we used to only have to use the ear wipes and now you can just use the same ear liquid to do the outside with any paper towel or cotton towel or whatever you like. And here you see me using the eye comb and I love this little comb because it's very easy to like little dirt or boogies in the eyes or even the bum or whatever is stuck in the coat, you can just get it out very, very easily with this little comb. These are things I love to do before the bath 
because like you in the bath it's very difficult to get the, 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 the bits and the crusts out so if possible always do this before the bath and here you see me cleaning the comb it's also very very important to keep it clean because it will be very very dirty if you don't do this and now let's do some nail clipping so here with my little comb I show you like the line of the pads and the pads are actually flat if you hold your clippers against the flat area and the nail is coming over that flat area that's the part that you can clip not to be afraid of if you do this part you will never go too short you can go shorter but then it's advisable to use a nail file and not a nail clipper and here you see me preparing the nail file and starting to file When I file, I like to file in all kinds of directions to make sure the nails are round. So when they jump on us or sit on our lap, we have a very rounded, soft cap. And here on this image, you see me on my fingers showing you what I actually do to use the nail file so I always like to have contact with my thumb so when the dog starts shaking I go shake with the dog and there's no like collusion or with both the nail file and the dog's feet And here you see how gentle Serena is with me and just letting me groom her nails. And here you see me clipping the pads. I've put the blades from the clipper all to the front. It's actually a very new clipper we have. It's called the Laguna. It's a very good clipper and price quality can't be beaten. It's important when you do the Yorkie pads that you check if there's no mats in between the pads. Further for the rest, you can just go with your clipper and scoop out all the hairs between the pads and you can go even just before where the nails are and the back of the pads, very short, and you have to just be careful you don't go too high on the sides because the sides need to be nice and rounded if you do that, you will end up with a nice round foot instead of a triangle foot. If you go too far with the clippers on the sides, you might end up with triangle feet and that's really not what we are after. Here you see me doing the little ears and when we, are, when we have clipped the little ears, it's important to use the scissor and just take the little ugly parts that are sticking out. If you do that, we don't follow the tip round, but we try to make the tip as square as possible. When you do that, you can think about a triangle or a square and just uh, whatever you do, don't make it round. Here again you see me scissoring and here at the point I'm not going to follow the point I'm going to stop and do the other side so I can make it pointed. It's also very important when you do that when you use the scissor you are having the scissor with the points of your fingers and you don't push very much so when you accidentally have skin in between your scissors you won't actually cut 
you are holding your scissor very, very, very light. And as soon as there's anything else but a very little small hair in between the scissor blade, you, you don't cut it, you just are stuck on it. So no pressure, not much muscles, just let the scissor do its job and just take the little, little points of the hair. Here you see the finished ear and you see there's no more little hairs sticking out. Let's do some washing. I have a lot to tell you about washing because washing is extremely important for a very healthy skin and coat. Today, first shampoo, we will use the Supreme shampoo, which is a degreasing shampoo, a deep cleaning shampoo with an amazing smell and a beautiful color. Here you see me preparing the shampoo and when you are using a bottle, it's very important to put the first the water in the bottle and here you see me using a special bottle, for diluting bottle, because the Supreme shampoo is dilutable 20 to 1. It means you have to dilute it 20 times with water. I first put the water into the bottle and then I follow the line 20 to 1. It's a bit difficult, so I use the pen here. And when you have the line correctly, then you can put the shampoo in it. I chose the Supreme shampoo because the Supreme shampoo is very degreasing. It's a deep cleaning shampoo and it has an enormous nice smell to it. When we have the correct line, we just fill it to the fill line with the Supreme shampoo. And here you see the water temperature. The dogs don't really like the very hot temperature. So here we have put it on 35 degrees. So it's lukewarm, but not really hot or warm. And it's also very important when you start wetting the dog that there is never any water into the nose. Here you see Serena, how nice she is in the bath and how she trusts us. This is because every time Serena has been washed, the owner has put around the eyes, around the nose, and she's not used to having any water in the nose. So she's just going to give her face and you can go around her nose and she just trusts us not to put any water in her nose. When you have a puppy, you can take a lot of time getting the puppy used to washing. It's just very important you protect or you do all you can not to have any water in the nose and then they will be very nice in the bath. They will let you wash around the face and around the little sensitive eyes and everything without any problem. Here you see me washing and you can actually feel how hard I rub here but I do rub hard and I try always to rub in this direction, in this direction, but you will not see me rub in rounds. Not any long haired dog, I will do that because when you do that, you will rub mats or tangles into the goat and that's really what we don't want, especially with long haired dogs. Also for me, a leg is a leg. And for me, a leg has four parts to it, inside, outside, the front and the back. And also for me, it's very important, all the little details in between the elbows. You might not think about it, but a dog goes on the frown, on, on the frown. <laughs> you might not think about it, but the dog lives on the floor and they go down with their elbows and with the paws they are on the floor all the time and it's dirty so for me i put some extra shampoo on the paws and i go in between every single toe and in between the pads and it's very important that everything is washed very neatly here you see me rubbing and rubbing hard and here you see the shampoo and the lather we got it's like important to have a very nice lather. If it gets too dry, put some water on it. If it's not lathering off enough, you can put some extra shampoo to it. But here you see what we need to have 
to perfectly wash the dogs. And last but not least, when the whole dog is very nicely rubbed everywhere from bottom to top, under the nails, we do the head. We do the head last because the dog might go down with the head or you might you, know, you might touch the head with your elbow while you are washing another part and there is a chance that some shampoo gets in the dog's eye. If this happens and you did the first the head, then it would sting and take a long time before you rinse and that would feel very uncomfortable. So to make it safe and to make it nice for the dogs, personally, I always do the head the last part. Of course, this works for me, but everybody does what they want. But for me, the head needs to be washed the last part. Then I wash the head and I rinse immediately. And for me, it feels good that way because I'm sure that there's no shampoo in the dog's eyes. I'm very careful not to have shampoo in the dog's eye. And if there is, I rinse immediately so all the shampoo is, you know, nice and out. Here you see me preparing the Romance Shampoo. The Romance Shampoo is a shampoo especially for long-coated dogs or dogs that need maintenance or dogs that have a dry coat and they mat and just it's a very good shampoo with nutritional oils to it and it's got vitamins in it and it puts a layer around the coat so the dog doesn't mat. It also, uh, it's a very creamy shampoo and it's also concentrated 1 to 20. So here you saw me again filling up the mixing bottle with water until the fill line and then to put the shampoo in it mix and here you see me applying the shampoo on the dog. Why does the Yorkie needs to be washed two times? Because the first time we get all the most grease out but sometimes all not not the grease is all not out and for sure if we didn't get everything out the first time we will the second time and to have a perfect wash dog we need to wash it twice and here you see me preparing the blossom and bloom conditioner i've decided to use it full strength because the Blossom and Bloom conditioner is a wonderful, very nourishing conditioner. It contains vitamin A and vitamin D, lanolin oil and she butter. All this will also put a pr protection layer around the dog's coat. After we use the conditioner, we've put the dry dude on and this has three reasons. First of all, you put the dry dude on because now it's winter time and we don't want the dog to get cold. Second of all, when the dog doesn't get cold, he's gonna heat up and the product, the active ingredients in the conditioner will penetrate better in the, in the coat. And third of all, it's like a wellness. And here you see me rinsing. It's very, very important to, even though you wanna keep some of the conditioner in the coat, you don't and you rinse everything nicely out. So I keep on feeling and rinsing and I feel as when the coat gets some kind of squeakiness back that all the conditioner is nicely rinsed out and then for me it's the sign that I don't need to rinse anymore. And here you see the magic towel. The magic towel is a wonderful product to absorb all the water to use as a towel, but when it's dry, it's extremely hard. It's like cardboard. The thing is, before you use it, you need to put water on it, and then it's gonna do an enormous job absorbing all the water out of the coat. And here you see me using the magic towel. I'm using not a normal towel, this is the Showtech Plus microfiber towel. The Showtech towels are like very, very thick 
and we are using the microfiber because the microfiber is a very fine fiber and takes very much more water than a cotton towel. First I'm using the K9 blaster to get out most of the water. This is very quickly time winning for if you have a salon. If you don't have a salon you can just do as much with a hair dryer, a hand dryer, it's just going to take a little longer. And then I'm going to continue to use a stand dryer. I'm showing you I'm not using very hot air because hot air can damage the coat very quickly and it's really very difficult but you have to be careful not to use very much hot air. And here also because the head is very sensitive uh, we do the head separate with the warm air from the stand dryer. Uh, the show coat slicker is a very good slicker with a very long handle and the pins from the show coat slicker are very 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 flexible. They are very soft and they have a little angle to them. The slicker brush is there to be hauled not by you hold hand but preferably to hold it with the tips of your fingers so you have feeling about using the slicker brush and when you are using the slicker brush it's very important just to test your slicker brush on your own skin so you know how how hard you push or don't push and or how, how softly you have to comb and brush without damaging the skin. Drying is very easy if you know what to do and I always have a lot of questions about this technique. Actually when we dry and you put a hair dryer on the coat you have like a place where all the hair goes up and you see like a star and that's exactly where you have to direction the dryer and go brushing. Now we do brush and we brush with the direction of the coat growth but also then we turn around the slicker and brush upwards so all the hairs are nicely lifted and all the curly and the waves go away and together with where the star is where the hair is nicely separated and the warm air we brush and we get all the tangles and the curls out and the hair is nice and fluffy. We also divide every single part in different parts, for example the front legs, I like to do first the sides and then the front and the back and then the inside. We make sections and I make sure all the sections get the most attention they need. To speak about perfection, actually why we do have to make such a fuss about the drying, when you are drying a dog for just the normal ways, it doesn't really matter if there's a curl or a wave too much. But when we have to scissor the dog after we are finished drying, we have to make sure that all the coat is straight. And here I'm showing a little drawing. And here in the drawing you will see why. On the left hand side you see where it's very curly. And here you see me scissoring the coat. And after we've passed our scissor, we will of course walk outside where it's windy and the wind is going to play in the coat or we are going to take a comb the day after and comb the coat. And when it wasn't being correctly dried and washed, the coat will be wavy and curly and you won't have a nice finish. Actually, every time we brush, in this case, it will be slightly different. Now. On the other side, here you see a drawing from a straight coat and this straight coat has been dried with warm air together with the perfect slicker brush and the coat is totally straightened. When we scissor this coat, it's going to have a very good finish and the finish is going to stay good because every single hair is straight. When it's in the wind or when you take a comb and you comb through the coat, it's still going to stay straight and the finishing of this clipping, of this scissoring, will be perfect and stay perfect. 
<laughs> it's fantastic to say that this perfect finishing is going to make the perfect difference between you and somebody else. <laughs> or is it between your perfection and somebody else's perfection? <laughs> Here I am lifting up Serena with the front legs because she's very nice and she's letting me do that. The only thing when you lift up, you have to be careful because you will stretch out the little skin which I just showed you and you just have to be very careful when you are using the slicker brush. You don't go over that little sensitive skin too much with your slicker brush. And here I'm going against direction with the slicker brush. And as you can see, I'm holding the slicker brush with the tips of my fingers and therefore I'm holding it very, very carefully. And certainly not pushing too much on the skin. Here you see me putting my hand in this way, so it's very easy. I can like slightly put the knee out and it's very easy for me to do the front of the back leg. And here you see me again showing how nice the dryer is situated and how it opens up all the coat. And because of that, you see perfectly if there is still need combing, because if you see that the hair is still sticking or curly or matted air, actually just have to keep on brushing. In Serena's case, Serena is being groomed every week and I don't think Serena knows what mats are because she's, she has a bath every week and she has a brush every day. So I don't really see mats in Serena. Here you see a tiny, tiny, tiny little tangle and it's very, very easy. You just put the dryer correct on so you see how big and where the tangle is and just gently go over it with a slicker brush and the tangle will disappear. This is the Yento Show Coat Slicker, which is special for the places hard to reach like the armpits and I can tell you, brushing armpits with this little slicker brush is fantastic. With this triangular brush, brushing between the back legs or actually all the little difficult places goes extremely well. It's amazing to see how she's looking. She's like enjoying this and it's just wonderful to have her here today with us. And here you see all the products I'm going to be using in the next steps. I've decided not to go clipping. It's in the middle of the winter and I want teddy bear and I'm actually scissor mad as well. And we have new scissors and I want to use the scissors. And if you use a straight comb, you can only take a little part of the coat. If you use a curved comb, you can lift up a very much larger area of the coat. And then if you combine this with a curved thinning scissor, you can win time because you can grab more hair and cut more hair in one time. And here you see me starting to scissor. I'm lifting up the coat with the comb. And every time I've lifted up the coat, let me show you the technique I use. It's just like with the hairdressers. You put the comb into the coat, you turn the comb around and you lift the coat. And then the next time you do, you take a centimeter or a finger further away, you do the same thing, put the comb in, turn the comb and lift the comb. If you don't have a curved comb, it's no problem. Take a straight comb, 
but you need to have a comb which is totally flat. So when you're scissoring on it, you don't have a bubble here like this one. This is a bubble and this one is totally flat. So when you are scissoring and you, are, you, are, you want to finish it correctly, you put your comb in here. Uh, this is like straight, this is like flat, it's like halfway. So I would say like 45 degrees and start in the back and go to the front. And now you can just take the little points which are sticking out and you are making this movement totally like this. And the hairs which are passing, if they're uneven, you can scissor them. So you start at the back and you have to do that a few times. So you start at the back and you just go to the front and sometimes you won't get them all but uh, many coats I do like this also Yorkies and Shih Tzus and it really works well to do the finishing so now it's all natural and you don't see any scissor marks a trick here which I didn't talk about or which maybe I didn't show you yet is when I do this this is short and this is actually long coat. And here you don't see a line because I don't like lines. I like the natural way of grooming. So when I was scissoring here, I was actually scissoring the back, but I was holding my scissor like this and I was like making this part short, but with a soft, uh, Ovenhang soft, uh, you didn't see any lines because here I lifted it, I went shorter at the top, but I left this line longer. So I have this without having um, a line. And I just go in. And I went in the coat a few times and I always was like on two centimeters away from the skin so I'm not gonna go very much in the same place I mean I'm not gonna like do that on the same place no I'm just gonna go upwards 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 I'm like gonna cut twice on the same place but not any longer the quicker way would be if I take the clipper and I do it with the clipper. But since I have new scissors, I just want to use my scissors and test them. Here I already have a bit of a little lines in the dog and you see slightly the lines coming, the angulations, the tummy and gradually you see the Yorkie change. Now let's do the front legs. For the front legs of the Yorkie I always like to do the front of just where the nails are very short and the back. And then I'm slightly going to round it off and I'm going to be very careful not to follow the lines of the feet because many Yorkies have a very narrow foot. If you follow the lines of the foot themselves, you might end up with a very triangle foot. So you need to like make it as round as possible. Here you see me lifting the coat before I scissor it. And for well, this part I'm using a straight scissor and not a thinning scissor. And the reason is it's very difficult here to use a thinning scissor and actually it's very fine, it's not really necessary to use a thinning scissor. It's important for the front legs you lift the hair nicely before you scissor 
and then you can scissor and comb and scissor and comb. Actually, the comb is very important. It's just as important as the scissor work. Combing to the left, combing to the right, combing all the hair upwards. And if you keep on combing, you will stretch the coat in all kinds of directions. And if you in between scissor the coat, you will end up with a very nice line and the line will stay that way. Here I'm trying to explain about the roundings and the angulations of the back legs. Here I'm showing you when I lift up the leg where the fold is, where his, where his actual angulation is. Uh, I'm personally not very afraid of where the actual natural angulation is to go very, very, very short. So here I'm lifting up the coat with my fingers and just going very short there because there it's very difficult to lift up the coat with the comb. And where the fold is I go extremely short and then above the fold I like to have a very rounded bum. Here I'm explaining about the rounded bum, the angulation and the straight hock. And here you see me doing the outside of the back leg. And I'm jumping up and down a bit here. You see me working on the front legs and again pulling the hairs in all kind of direction and scissoring and combing. Here you see me working on the front of the back legs and it's very important there to have a nice rounded line from the tummy to the back leg. Here I'm lifting up the tail and all the hairs which are springing out too much I'm trying to take off. So afterwards when the Yorkies are running outside and playing you see a nice line without too much hair sticking out next to the tail. And here again you see a very nice rounded bum with the angulation and the straight hop. And here as well you see the line from the back legs to the tummy which is nice and rounded. Grooming the tummy and the tuck up is very important, needs to be nice and rounded and especially at the tuck up you cannot go too short. Here I'm showing you what would happen if the tuck up would be too short. You will have a very long body and it would be very square and it would be really not nice. Let's do some scissoring at the head. Here I'm like combing all the hairs straight and at the ear where I started to shave I'm going to make a straight line with the scissor and scissor everything off. Here as well I've combed everything forward and every hair which is sticking out, I'm scissoring off with a straight scissor this time again. It's very easy, it's just where you started to do the clipping and just follow that line and everything towards it or at the back of it or at the front of it which is sticking out needs to disappear and you need to like to do it a few times so it's nice and neat and here again you see me combing all the hairs and here I've just taken some of the coat between my fingers and I've just made the first part a bit shorter 
to make it easier later to make the hair stand up. Here you see me combing everything to the front and just going from one side to the other side and making it nice and short. And because I really want to see the eyes as quickly as possible, all the hair which is in front of the eyes, I am now scissoring off. So I see Serena as she is. She's very beautiful. She has very beautiful eyes. <laughs> and I would really like to make sure when Serena looks at us that her eyes are very nicely visible. Serena is amazing. She is so good at the table, at standing still and trusting us to do what we have to do. Here you see me like combing the hair in the direction of the eyes. So I'm pretending that it's very windy and the wind is coming from everywhere. I'm pulling it from the left to the right and also all the hairs in the direction of the eye and everything which is in the way I am scissoring off. About shaping the under part as round as possible that's going from the throat to the front and back to where I started to scissor the ears. So this is like round and round and round. In this part, we are thinking about proportions. How long should the head be? So actually I'm stepping back uh, like a meter and I'm looking at the size of the dog, how long I've left the coat, and then we can determine how long the head should be. So let us continue scissoring and combing all the time in all kinds of directions and making the, the head round And here, as you can see, I'm using the straight scissors. Here, I'm going to like lift the ear to do underneath and to make it round and round. This is the part where we are rounding. We have to be shaping, making a round head like Westy like, and you have to be just very careful scissoring and taking the hair with the comb and then scissoring again bit by bit to make it as round as possible. Here you see me holding the ear and then making all the coat behind the ear as even as possible. By holding the ears with your hand forward, you can very nicely scissor the back of the head evenly. So it's a very nice technique and it's a very nice way of holding the ears so you can clean up the back of the head. Now let's do some styling and finishing. Styling is very important because hair that you would like to make as round as possible, it's very difficult when it all falls down. This is not snow, but this is the texturizing powder. And this is like snow, it's as light as snow, but it makes the hair stick up very, very much. It's very easy to use, sprinkle it on, do some back combing and the hair will stand up in an amazing way to be able to finish. So after you sprinkle it on, just do some back combing. The back combing is important on the top of the head, but also the side of the head. So under the ears, the round part here, also some back combing. To apply the texturizer, actually a very good thing to use is the powder puffer. And the powder puffer has like a, a large straw 
kind of um, muzzle and if you push you can just in between the coat apply the product and it will give you the volume and the stand up where exactly it's necessary. If you would like to have perfection then you can finish everything with the Evolution hairspray. This hairspray is a very natural hairspray and even while you are using the Evolution you can still do combing and brushing but the hair will be standing up for sure and all the hair which is standing up it will be very easy to scissor. Here you see the back of the head and you see how nicely you can finish and how nicely you can round everything if the hair is so nicely standing upwards. Serena is behaving like a doll instead of a dog. She is so nice to groom. She is so nice. Be careful not to spray on the nose or on the eyes, so don't forget to protect the eyes with your hands before you spray hairspray. Here you see the before and after pictures. I think there's a very big difference from the before and the after and I've enjoyed very much grooming Serena. She's a wonderful dog and she's been behaving like a doll. She also looks like a doll. She's very cute. She's a wonderful, beautiful dog. Please feel free to share the video if you like the video or if you have found this video educational and helpful. And this was Kitty for Kitty Talks Dogs. Thank you very much for watching and I wish you a very happy Christmas and a very nice new year. Don't forget to buy presents for your dogs. Give the dogs as much love as you have, give them attention and keep on grooming. See you next time.